about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. One time I was traveling to, I can't remember where, and I was seated in the, in the plane and quite honestly, when I looked around, almost everybody around me was by far older than me and then I was sleeping you know this kind of sleep that you're nodding you're like this left right and center and someone tapped me and said you're a young man what are you doing that gets you this tired to be sleeping and then um, I said no no this is an elderly man I can't be foolish we we're taught to respect but I said oh dear oh dear This man of God that stands here and smiles and preaches and prays and whilst you are sleeping he's awake with the wife praying for you crying for you there are many breakthroughs you can't remember praying for but they happened I tell you where they came from they came from the altar that drips with blood consistently this is not some church gimmick. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Many of the men and the women of God will stand upon this altar and bless you. They have come on account of the sacrifice of relationships. You must be a contributor. You must acknowledge. When I was in seminary, my principal then in the seminary he was one of the people who truly gave me the foundation for godliness structural foundation he had lived in the u.s for many years and so when he came he brought in that culture and most of the the he concretized moral excellence excellence in general taught us so many things that were out of the curriculum for our training and a few years ago I was burdened in my heart and I told my dad he was my dad's classmate coincidentally and I said please can you help me let's go to that man and my dad drove me I went down to Joss and when I went to him I was happy to see him now he was quite significantly elderly and I greeted him I got down on my knees and he said apostle I said don't call me apostle sir I'm still your boy I'm still your son and he said you don't know how proud of you I am watching you and seeing what you're doing all over the world and I said sir I brought this gift to tell you God remains God but if you were not there I believe that a significant part of my life would not be the way it is and I told my father to escort me because I wanted you to know that I am grateful and if you will permit me there is something i want to be doing for you and for the rest of your life till your eyes see the king for as long as i'm alive you will not beg for bread again the price for your welfare you paid it in me and now that i am made please find rest because i'm alive that's what i did for him i went back feeling fulfilled i remember when god called me to ministry when i gathered my parents I watched my dad and my mom as I knelt down and they laid hands on me and spoke over my life. It was a risk being the first son of the family. 
and recently i had the opportunity to honor them one of my goals in my lifetime is that the world will stand and clap for my parents and the day that happened tears came out of my eyes i said finally one of my life's goal is done who can rejoice because you are alive who can call you a person of consolation please listen we have 10 minutes and we're done there are people who are called sons of consolations burden bearers there are people who a man of god a businessman every great man will tell you that's why when people are going passing on to glory some of them leave their wills not for their children sadly because the children are not sons of consolation they can find this supposed house help who had been there for 20 years 30 years there was a man in this city who became very sick years ago he was transported out of this city flown to india or someplace and there were rumors that he had died and some of the workers cleared the company they emptied everything the stationaries because rumor came that that man it looked like he had died yes he was paralyzed but he was still alive and there were only two of the people who were left when that man returned back on a wheelchair he entered into his own company he started crying physically and the doctors had to manage him so he would not die he said these were people i invested in i took some of them without interview i gave some of them double salary some of them came to me and they pleaded with me do you know the pain that many leaders many men of god go through all across this nation are you listening to what i'm telling you your pastor stands here to invest jesus to invest the word to invest life a few times that we have the opportunity to speak i am amazed that there are few times we really talk about ourselves he's not talking about himself great things that the lord is doing the last time i came during your conference when i was done i had the joy to go to your structure the building i was amazed when i saw the master plan him and the woman of god i could see the passion in their heart while i was praying i said my god these people don't even think about themselves As I saw your worship team leading worship and jumping, I said, look, these people, some of them are family people. Only God knows the inconvenience that they had to go through to make sure they serve Jesus. Hear me. Are you aware of the inconvenience that people go through to see that you grow spiritually? Not just the set man, but even those who are connected to the ministry. Is it fair and is it honest? That your CEO, your man of God, your woman of God, your boss in the office. Even during the recession, the company did not plunge down. You may not know the negotiations and the sacrifices, the diplomacy and everything that need to go on behind the scene. Or needed to go on behind the scene to keep that company standing. I dare you to write down the list of five or ten people. Who are most significant in your life and make up your mind that this week coming you are going to plant a seed of honor not money necessarily but honor to them i challenge you this is not a discussion i've had with your pastor i challenge you don't wait for a pastor's appreciation day or some special event you see when you come through for people during special events it's natural there's nothing unusual about it that you come as a person and as a family and you meet the woman of god and say ma we always laugh we always jump around but i want you to know that you are a major contribution to the health of my life my family my spiritual life and i just want you to know that i am truly grateful you have a seed to back up what you're doing you see you can buy someone a car and yet it is not honor honor is not just in money or materials is the sincerity of your heart you see when you tell somebody thank you 
the assignment of thank you is to make sure that the person recognizes your depth he perceives the depth of your gratitude so it is your assignment to use all the skills you can employ to ensure you cannot stop giving thanks until the person who helped you has come to a point of comprehension if i give you one thousand naira and you say thank you i give you ten thousand naira you say thank you i give you um hundred thousand you say thank you i give you one million you say thank you you've not worked in wisdom it was not the same sacrifice that brought those levels of gifts so your assignment is to employ every skill within your power to ensure that i recognize how deeply grateful you are it may require kneeling down it may require multiple text messages it may require saying thank you many times the assignment is not to verbalize thanks the assignment is to study my mind to see that you must burn it in my mind that i am grateful and for such people let me tell you every time you effectively communicate thanks you create a debt that must be paid back to you it is true growing up we used to gather as a family to pray and we really hated it as children because when is my dad's turn and my mom to pray oh dear if my mom begins to pray here lord is it not the other day i was going out by the road was it left or right i can't remember she's praying when a car was about to come if it was not your message would we i mean and then she'll continue praying father thank you father thank you and we're there wondering and saying oh god please help my, my prayer to you is help my mother round up <laughs> and then my dad comes with his own he may not be as detailed but i tell you he can spend five minutes just saying thank you how childish we were we didn't recognize the things for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise i magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise. Your honor stands to God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And then the significant vessels. There are husbands here that need to truly honor their wives. You may not know the sacrifices that madame does every day with joy. You just return back and there's food. Don't say I paid her dowry. There are many women who need to appreciate their husbands. Don't complain and say, look at this man. He's bought two cars. I may be a young man, but I've been a man all my life. I assure you, it's not easy being a man. A lady gave birth this morning and when they sent me the photos and I saw the baby, I said, Lord Jesus, thank you that I'm a man. I don't, I'm not sure that I have the grace. Just from the photo, I'm, I'm not sure that I desire. Bible says covet earnestly, not, not that one. And yet, sir, with all due respect, Madame gave you two children, three children, four children, five children. It's not a big deal. Remember the danger of familiarity. There are young people here. Now you are doing well and you leave your parents. You see some of these are old folks still doing what they were doing while they were young mama is still carrying wood in the village and the man is here giving donations to churches i'm not against it but make sure that in all your lifting you do not forget those who helped you there are many people who do not take care of their families but sometimes you come to us as men of god and you bless us with millions whereas the family members are suffering it ought not to be so We're rounding up. We we'll apologize after the service, but I need to bond this. Are we together now? Yes, sir. There are homes that the moment you see special plates, you know visitors are coming. 
they kill chicken and it's the head and the legs that the children eat you see them standing somewhere around the kitchen as beggars in their own homes while visitors that will betray you tomorrow they come and they have the choice meals i'm planting in you a seed of honor beware of neglecting what is close to you the greatest gifts in your lives are the ones around you your father your mother anything you cannot pay for is god's gift to you don't allow your children hate you because of how you dishonor them they go out of the house and they are treated as kings they return back home and they are treated as rubbish same thing with parents there are many young people parents remain in the office because their children they let me tell you there is nobody who runs away from an atmosphere of honor there are many men today who cannot go home christians as soon as they enter their homes dishonor speaks everywhere There are churches that dishonor their pastors dishonor their men of god i do not know any assembly where the man of god will not excel knowing that his people love him sincerely not something you qualified for apostle good heart thank you for being my pastor i love you that you can truly he knows how comforting it will be you can be serving in the church doing things but your heart is sincerely not there we are talking of a genuine connection let me therefore propose a few things to you as i attempt to round up number one you must make a covenant with yourself and your life and your destiny that for as long as you are planted in this assembly under god make it a point of duty that you will stand and you will die with your pastor make it a point of duty that you will see to it that as he follows christ you are giving him the best of your support and everything extend that same mentality to your boss extend that same mentality to your children can i tell you this there are many young people today who hate their parents because the parents never believed in them they went elsewhere your father is not the person who gave birth to you your father is the person who believed in you believed in you enough to invest maybe this is a word that god is giving a few parents be careful the words you use on your children the way you tear them down someday the sun will go down and the little boy today who is helpless will come to a position where you may be ashamed to lay claims everybody's destiny is divided into the morning stage the afternoon stage the evening stage and the night stage he says so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom this is a key that has changed my life i'm honored today to be part of the life this is why i'm sent to the body of christ you do not know what joy it gives me do you know aside from being a man of god my greatest personal legacy as a human being is to be one who lived his life loving the lord and sincerely being a shoulder for many people aside being a man of god. the meaning of my name is the way to love and it's a very powerful name I blessed my parents a thousand times for being that discerning to give me such a name. I sincerely love people. I don't use people. I don't try to know. Return to the place of genuine honor. Return to the place of genuine honor. Honor to God. There are some of us I know now. I want to say something in one minute and then we're done. There are many of us here who even though we are a congregation, the truth is i want to tell you an uncomfortable truth from a sociological standpoint from a spiritual standpoint even though this is logic and by extension whatever church listening and following and the body of christ i want to bring you to a sincere realization that you are not all the same that is the honest truth 
from a standpoint of sacrifice from a standpoint of achievement you are not all the same and there must be a system i'm not trying to teach stratification yes we are all equal before god but if that statement is not balanced it will lead to a lot of dishonor i found out that the reason why many blessed and wealthy people do not come to church is that there is a track record of dishonor their sacrifices are trivialized in the name of creating a unified platform to bless people jesus did not hide his honor for noble people zacchaeus come down i've changed i'm going to your house and because of that one sacrifice many people were forgiven the centurion you are a man under authority i respect you i don't need to come to your house i will speak the word no matter how high god lifts me i'm wise enough to know that there are positions i occupy today sociologically speaking that is a privilege it didn't come by age it didn't come by qualification and we must be wise enough to communicate the same is god helping us so there are many of us that god will bring us into places where from a physical standpoint we should not be there don't abuse that access when god gives you access to the ears the hearts the hands of kings and nobles do not trivialize it one time i was going to pray for a, a first class traditional ruler in this nation and when i got there there are these people i don't know what they call them the ones who hold whip and ensure compliance those guys there and i was going to enter the palace and you don't enter the palace with your shoes you know that right but the man said no he said enter and the people were surprised i said no 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 sir please let me take off my shoes he said no i am king i said enter but if i'm going to see him another day and i now buckle my shoes and just jump in no i will not abuse that access can i tell you this every time a man shows you uncommon access make sure you send back a message that makes him know i recognize this is a privilege and i do not take it for granted i guarantee you do that and you have secured his fear that fear of if i give you greater access would you abuse it if you let them know that you are aware that you will never abuse it then you will see more of them these are the keys of the kingdom that we do business with i've received calls today that i will tell you sincerely even at this level god has helped me god has honored me but there are calls i've seen that i had to say whoa okay something happened recently that really shook me one of the prominent global families global families on earth i'm sitting and suddenly i get a call i'm a lawyer to abc family they have demanded that we should fly you to come and help settle something in the family and i said okay this is serious i'm not sure i have a visa to that nation and they laughed they said do you know who is talking to you visa to where ah said well we've been taught to be obedient citizens you have to get your visa so they don't embarrass you <laughs> oh dear i pray for you in the name of jesus who is the helper of men the doors that have been closed in your life as a result of dishonor in the name that is above all names here at this exalted altar we declare those doors open now we declare those doors open now in the name of jesus now listen to me we are going to pray and i'm going to give you one or two minutes by the grace of god please passionately pray first you are going to ask for mercy for communicating dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles many of us as i'm speaking to you now god is bringing to mind the reason why certain groups just alienated you why certain individuals you communicated dishonor by speaking wrongly about people and they later heard what you said and on account of that they closed certain doors lift your voice and pray for mercy roger can we pray body of christ lift your voice and let's pray father in the name of jesus we obtain mercy we are praying it's time for doors to be opened again it's time for doors to be opened blessings on ending it's time for us to step into realms of prepared blessings through understanding 
it says by knowledge shall the just be delivered go ahead and pray shali pras kadabo shinahasa shkala bradanda saprakato sekete brende gete balahasya mercy O god for the doors that i have shut knowingly and unknowingly i have severed valuable relationships through dishonor relationships that would have been ladders for me today i would have been 10 times better you may say cry for mercy hallelujah second prayer point you are going to pray sincerely that god will grant you the grace to unashamedly communicate honor it takes a lot of revelation and maturity to communicate honor because communicating honor can be ego stinging especially when you communicate honor to people who may not seem like they are deserving of it sometimes you may communicate honor and they may not reciprocate it if someone is sowing nonsense in his own garden you shouldn't be so angry that you change what you are sowing in your own garden you will reap what you sowed not what your neighbor sold if you honor a person and it dishonors you back don't worry the bible says you will reap what you sowed not where you sowed it are you ready to pray you're going to cry to the god of heaven grace to practice honor as a principle grace to practice honor please lift your voice peace in the church in my department grace to practice honor in my family lift your voice and pray lord the grace the grace to practice honor as a lifestyle honor in business honor in business honor in ministry Honor in career, honor in relationships, honor in family. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to do something very prophetic. You are going to pray as a point of contact. The apostle over this assembly, Apostle Goodheart, and his dear wife. You notice I always talk about him and his wife. If you honor a man alone, you are not sincere. Are we together now yes it is always christ and the church not christ alone you honor christ you hate the church his jealousy will still fight you because jealousy is the rage of a man if you truly know that apostle goodheart and his dear wife have been shepherds laboring praying i want you to sow a seed of prayer right now you're going to pray in one minute and passionately pray as you would pray for yourself lord lift them lord keep them come on Roger. is this how much you love your pastors is this how much you love your shepherds lift your voice and pray pray from the depth of your heart uneasy lies the head that wears the crown please pray please pray please pray Lord, may this honor towards these vessels never be found in my life, through my words, through my body language. I make a covenant with God that I will make ministry easy for them. Are you praying? I make a covenant with God that I will support them. I will stand by them. I will invest into their lives to see that as they exalt Jesus, as they feed me, that they are not stranded that they are not frustrated that they are not suicidal in the name of jesus i will ensure that they are healthy whatever it is within my power to see to it that christ remain lifted and honored and glorified in logic i become an active contributor an active participant please pray hallelujah hallelujah now 
I apologize but I want to give you just one instruction in righteousness or two please listen hold on guys we're wrapping up this is a very serious business I cannot begin to tell you the things I've seen just standing here preaching we're not doing that and my time is up we have to honor the time but there are two things I want to tell you honestly speaking in Christ and by humility if you keep these things your life it will not some of you it will not take weeks number one I want you to please write down the names of 10 people the Holy Spirit will minister to you who are deserving of honor in your life when you go back it could be you and your wife it could be you and your children it could be you as an individual that you want to show these people honor whether by sending a text by a seed whatever it is that you have to do for them please you do this in the name of the Lord and watch what happens remember it's one thing to desire to do a thing but it's another thing to be instructed to do a thing there is always an unction even if some of you even if some of those people are people you know who may not easily like you maybe rivals in business maybe someone you know who has been the reason why your company don't worry just do what i'm asking you to do honor is powerful that's what killed her man a woman used honor as a sword displaced another woman killed her man and secured the entire 127 provinces sometimes the battle does not need swords honor is a vicious weapon it can fight are we together number two now this is something that is from my heart and now it will be unfair if we do not do this i want to encourage everyone inside those following forgive me apostle goodheart i know he might be watching and and um pastor mrs bimbo forgive me but let me say this i want everyone under god go back to god and think of something a seed of honor that you are going to sow into the life of apostle goodheart and his wife if you don't what i'm saying that's all right please it will be hypocrisy to come and sow a seed into my life and bless me when you have not done so to your pastor let me tell you sincerely not many people will be this honest to tell you are we together now yes yes listen to this some of you right now as i'm talking to you god is speaking to you please listen some are following online some are workers and the lord is speaking to you i'm not going to make any calls to say come out necessarily no but there are men and women that god is speaking to you and saying look what this man has done you called him in your down times he prayed with you you confided in him he honored you you opened up several things they are the reason why some homes are still remaining today they are the reasons why some people are still moving forward ministers are like doctors when you stand before a doctor you don't say I'm an adult if it's time for injection you turn and receive the injection quietly are we together and sometimes they can perform surgery so there's no secret with doctors that's that's the way it is with ministers open up your wounds and they bandage everything you must make up your mind that seeds of dishonor through words seeds of this don't let anybody come and sow wrong seeds for instance no no be bold be matured and be determined enough that i will never allow myself to be a partaker of evil this is a very powerful principle are we together you are going to agree with god agree with your wife agree with your husband please i want you to do this if you love god you honor me and you honor jesus i want you to do this that god according to i know that this is a ministry with very blessed people i'm not talking of giving for church project i'm not talking of giving into rod ministry i'm not talking of giving into no i'm talking of your pastor and his wife 
if God can grant you grace and they can give you audience it's not just transferring money or sending this is oh no it's not just about that to let them know the least anyone can do here is to send a sincere text message is that true Apostle Goodhart Pastor Mrs. Bimbo thank you I listened to Apostle's message and I'm truly convicted I just sat down and thought through your kindness the last 13 years the last 20 years the last five years the last six months thank you I cried the other day and your hands were there to wipe my tears I just want you to know that I'm sincerely grateful never send somebody a text and say many people have blessed me just to let you know you are one of them that's a very demonic text message there is there is nothing special in that kind of text message don't do that you know that's the text people that's why the people don't call you back many people have blessed me just to let you know you are one of them no you have to give people a sense of exclusivity it's a secret father i stand in partnership with the grace upon the set man and his wife i thank you for this beautiful congregation made up of veterans in business and career in ministry lord i acknowledge on his behalf i stand here representing apostle goodhart and his wife to let you know that truly they honor you listen to me i'm not praying we're about to pray some of you in this church are very wealthy people it's no secret some of you in this church are very influential people some of you in this church are captains of industry some of you are people with uncommon achievements for some of you it's a big sacrifice every time you come here let me stand on behalf of god's servant and his wife to tell you that it's not only him that you honor i can tell you this apostle goodhart truly honors you and recognizes your sacrifice your seeds your place it's important for you to know this and that if for any reason anybody has communicated dishonor of any sort i am telling you this now that it was never intended so are we together now many times i talk to my people they know that i love them i let them know lavishly let me challenge all the heads of units and departments here extend this show of honor to the people in your department whoever heads the worship team make sure that you let the people know that on behalf of apostle goodhart we honor you and we thank you don't take for granted that people leave their homes and come for rehearsal don't take for granted that people show up every other time when you let people know you sincerely honor them the gift is that they will give more of themselves to you and so i'm standing as representing the man of god and his wife Rogic. in the name of jesus christ i join my faith with apostle goodhart and his wife to tell you that as servants of the living god you are greatly honored you are greatly treasured and you are sincerely appreciated do you believe what i said yes so do not be in doubt and never think for once that your pedigree is being demeaned or downplayed no on your own part please do me this favor even though he's away do your best if you have his contact if you do not find a way of letting the woman of god and the man of god know that you sincerely and you celebrate them and at a workforce level all of the people who head units those in those departments find ways to make your leaders know too you appreciate them because at their level they are paying prices you may never know some of them have to settle quarrel with their wives because they are coming home late make sure you let them know are we in agreement on this the lord bless you the lord honor you in the name that is above all names I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will increase you. I've been told that I have a minute or two to quickly make an altar call. Thank you. Thank you for that privilege. Now, please keep standing. I believe with all my heart that there is no service ordained by God where there is not at least one person who should be saved.
if it is God people he always adds as many as should be saved so i believe that scattered in this congregation inside outside those following online i believe that there are people who truly need to make jesus lord of their life remember the first dimension of honor is to god to jesus himself hallelujah and then there are others who may be saying apostle i love jesus christ but in recent times my life has gone haywire and i truly need to return back if you belong to any of these categories please i'll just give you a few seconds we're out of time i'd like you to gallantly and boldly leave your seat and just come stand here i want to have the honor and the privilege of leading you to jesus please let's celebrate them as they come don't be afraid don't wait for the first person to come be that one person who comes be that one person who comes is there someone like that you're rededicating your life you're giving your life to jesus god bless you i know someone is coming there has to be someone coming Rogic, is this the best you can do? Be it unto me According to your word Keep coming According to your promises I can stand secure Will you come upon my heart The truth is set me According to your word, O oh Lord, be it unto me. Those who are following online, I'd like you to follow on with the prayer. Those of you standing, thank you so much for making this decision. It's a noble decision, the noblest decision any man can make. Jesus is able to give us a new beginning. I'd like you to lift your right hand if you can. And I want you to passionately say this from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is a prayer that leads to your salvation. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Those online, please follow on. Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe that you are the son of God. This morning, I have heard your word. And I have decided to honor you by giving you my life in exchange for yours i declare that from today you are my lord i declare that from today you are my savior you are my king i receive eternal life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father we thank you for this ones the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise despise father you have brought them by your spirit thank you for the gift of courage that you have given them to come I commend you all to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit I pray that you be built I pray that you be established I declare over you that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is broken over your life. From today, you enjoy the peace of God. You enjoy newness of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please look at me, those in front. Thank you very much. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands, all of you, in concert. They'll have a word with you and then you'll be back. God bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and the Lord increase you. I declare that this week beginning for you is a week of signs and wonders. I agree and I speak over your life that everything that has caused your door to close, in the name of Jesus, let it be open. There will be testimonies here next week of the fruits of honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that you will experience the grace, the glory, and the goodness of God in unusual dimensions. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much and God bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message,
We believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.